Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm over at FlexLogix with Chen Wang, who's going to talk today about lookup tables. So Chen, what is a lookup table? A lookup table can be viewed as a read-only memory cell. It's basically a cell that is programmable to implement any combinatorial operation within that number of inputs. So for example, a two-input lookup table can implement any AND or NAND XOR gates as long as it's two inputs. A four-input lookup table can do a four-input combinatorial function of arbitrary computation. Does every semiconductor design have a lookup table? Um, uh, generally, no, but they may use read-only memories, which are actually exactly the same thing. But in every reconfigurable logic design, namely FPGAs, it's almost all implemented in modern day with lookup tables. Though some of the older days of CPL days may use some kind of uh, muxable, uh, selectable and OR gates to implement similar functions. But, but a fully programmable lookup table is much more versatile and is used almost exclusively in today's FPGAs. Okay. Can you show this to us visually? Mm, yeah, sure. So what are we looking at here? So this is a very simple example of a two input lookup table. So for example, you may have two inputs zero and one that could have four states because that would be two to the power of two. And it can be used to implement, for example, an AND gate, in which case the four logic elements in here will be mapped to zero, 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 and one. And for OR gate, the four logic elements here will be mapped to 0, 1, 1, and 1, and the XOR gates will be mapped to 0, 1, 1, and 0. It's basically a choose table that tells the FPJ for each of these input combinations what the values of the output should be. So this could be a simple two input lookup table that can be used to map any two input functions, including these very commonly used ones. So for a four input lookup table, there will be two to the four, which will be 16 entries to the, the, the read-only memory, ROM. And for a six input lookup table, there will be two to the six, which will be 64 entries to this ROM. What's the advantage of having more lookup tables? Ah, very good question. So having a larger number of inputs to your lookup table allow you to build a much more complex logic gate within one lookup table cell, or what they call logic cell. And logic cell is very important in an FPJ world because the more logic cells you have to implement a certain function, not only does that add area, that also adds significant routing to connect these logic cells together. So it is very beneficial to be able to implement the combinatorial logic the customer needs in as few logic cells as possible as long as the, num as the logic cell sizes are reasonable and the routing resources required to route them are reasonable. So as you add in more inputs to your lookup tables, what does that do to performance? What does it do also for power? Yeah, so um, any customer will care about performance, error, and power. And one thing to keep note is um, they are all kind of related in the world of FPGAs, but let's uh, look at a very simplistic example first. Uh, let's say we have a six input combinatorial gate. And if we are using a lookup table structure of four inputs or less, we will have to use two stages of lookup tables, a two stage followed by a one stage in order to realize this six input logic cell. However, if we were to build them with a six input lookup table, we can realize the same combinatorial logic with a single logic cell. Now, each one of these four input lookup tables have 16 entries. And each one of these six input lookup tables have 64 entries. So at a glance, well, you can say, Chen, these only adds up to 48 entries, while these require 64 entries. Why is it that six input LUTs are better? It is because of routing. FPGAs are heavily dominated by routing, and flex logics have one of the best routing architectures, and yet we're still more than 50% routing by area. Therefore, the route here, the route here, and the route here 
w add way more area and way more power and way more delay to your lookup table than the difference in the, the number of entries can contribute. So, so therefore, um, even though a six input lookup table is four times larger in terms of the number of entries, the actual power difference from a single lookup table that is six input versus four is maybe 30% maybe 50%. Of course, it depends on the actual logic that you're mapping. But because you now only have to use one logic cell and one set of interconnects as opposed to two feeding into a third one, the overall power reduction far outweighs the, the um, power penalty from a larger lookup table. So if you're, if you're using uh, more separate lookup tables, is the routing on that from the interconnect harder than it is on a single lookup table? Absolutely. In fact, on an FPJ, uh, the connection between a lookup table to another lookup table is never just a wire. In fact, there is a whole series of switches that have to take place in order for any point A and point B to connect together. And therefore, it looks much more like a series of muxes in between two lookup tables. And these series of muxes and the wires that they're driving has way more delay and way more power than the, the power contributed by the, by the lookup table itself. So we understand the power implications as well as the, the performance implications. Are there any instances where a four input lookup table is better than a six input lookup table? Um, I don't want to say better, but there are some cases where they could be very comparable. So for example, if we have now a combinatorial cone that's of 12 inputs, so we have something like this, we have something like this, and then we can use a third four input lookup table to feed into here. And now on the other hand, we still would need another six input lookup table to feed into a second stage. Uh, so one can argue, hey Chen, look, both of these cases of 12 input, one output combinatorial logic have two stages of logic. So in terms of performance, it should be on par. It's a lot followed by some routing, followed by a second lookup table, same here. So in this case, a four input lookup table is slightly faster than a six input lookup table because it's a smaller uh, logic cell. Uh, that, uh, therefore, internally, it's got fewer stages of logic. Um, from input to output. So in this one case, the four input lookup table structure can result in a slightly faster performance, even though the six input lookup table structure still uses one fewer lookup table. In this case, one can argue that there is a disadvantage to going to a larger um, uh, six input lookup table versus the more traditional four input lookup tables. But I will consider this to be more of a special case. As you add more inputs, does it get harder to design these chips with the, the more lookup tables? Uh, yeah, sure. In fact, the modern day SOC designs and therefore the, the designs map, uh, map onto our embedded FPGAs are getting so complex that it's almost always better to go into the larger six input LUT structure. It is better from a power performance and area perspective. For example, if you have now a real design of a network processor, we may have a 200 to 1 in terms of your fan in to your fan out. Um, that's going to be uh, 4 to the 4 in terms of um, mapping them to 4 input lookup tables, which will be 4 stages. But then with 6 input lookup tables, you can do them with 3 stages. Take one more example of 1,000 to 1 you know, a huge network processor or a huge combinatorial cone that you have to examine and, de and, de and determine the states of these combinatorial logic, this is going to be on the order of four to the five, which is five stages of four input local tables, and it can be done with simply six to the four. So it can be possible to find cases where four and six input local tables are comparable in performance, but for any kind of realistic designs, it's almost certain that they will have superior uh, power, performance, and area by moving to a larger six input local tables. However, not every interconnect architecture can map six input LUTs very efficiently. So when we think about FPGAs, we always think about density. How does this fit into uh, that model? Well, very excellent question. FPGA users and, and FPGA builders like us always care about density. But density shouldn't just be measured in how big is my lookup table or, 
or you know how many lookup tables can I fit into one millimeter square? That's important, but much much more important question is for each user design, how much FPGA area do you need to map that design properly and efficiently? So, in this one example where you know you look at the six input LUT and the four input LUT and you go, there is not a whole lot of difference in terms of LUT count. This, this uses four logic cells, this uses three logic cells. But remember, this is one extreme example I was trying to show where four input LUT may come close or be even better in terms of performance. But for most cases, you know, like our first example where, where we had a single stage versus a three stage, well, the number of logic cell difference is three to one. So for more realistic examples, the number of logic cells you need for a six input LUT versus four is anywhere on the order to one and a half to, to two. And I believe Xilinx have used a multiplier of 1.6. And, and, and I believe for the data that we have collected, it is within a reasonable expectations. Chen Wang, thanks for a great explanation. You're welcome.